All right, picking up where we left off with our faucet in our bathroom scene, we are going to start modeling two objects in this video. One is going to be a shelf in which we will reuse some of our geometry from our faucet and knobs. And the second object is going to be our soap dispenser for on top of the sink. So to get started with the shelf, it's going to be a glass shelf that hangs on the wall above the toilet. Uh, let's start by creating a new collection for it. Uh, we're probably going to do away with some of these collections later down the road, but right now this is going to help us stay organized uh, and keeping things separated by video. So let's call this shelf. And with shelf selected, let's put our cursor at the center of the scene with uh, shift S and cursor to world origin. I'm going to go a little faster in this video since this is all going to be review. Let's go to top down, hit seven to do that. And you'll be able to see with the screencast keys all that I'm doing. So let's hit shift A to add. We'll add a plane and this plane is going to be about one meter wide. I'm sorry, half a meter wide and uh, depth from the wall is probably going to be about 0.1 or 0.13. I like those dimensions a little better. And it's going to be a plane of glass. So let's tab in edit mode, extrude up. It's going to be a thick piece of glass. Uh, in fact, let's not extrude. Let's use our solidify modifier. This will make things a little easier anyway. So in uh, object mode, we will click on our modifier tab and click on solidify. And that's actually just a little too thick. That looks good right there. So now if we tab into edit mode, you'll see we only have this plane on the bottom, nothing actually on top. Select all. Control 7 will show us the view from below. And we'll hit Control B for bevel, but you'll see nothing's happening. Hit V to bevel vertexes. Now, we did not apply our scale. And this is exactly what I was talking about when I said that some modifiers and tools will not work correctly, or you'll get unexpected results if you don't apply your scale. And right now we should be getting 45 degree angles on each of those corners, we're not. Uh, so let's tab into object mode, control A, apply rotation and scale. And when we go back in and control B, V, you'll see that we have proper bevels. Let's increase our divisions a little bit and we'll have an divide to a point where you have an odd number of divisions so that we have a central vertex on each corner from which to divide our surface. Next we'll divide this up into quads. So we will select um, two vertexes across from each other. That's click, shift, click, and J will join those. That will make a cut basically across between them. If you were to select two of them and hit F for fill, you would have an edge here, but it's not actually connected to the surface, so you'll run into problems. So this is not the proper use of the fill command. So we'll control Z. Uh, J, J, J. And we'll hit three for face select mode, A for all, I for inset. Something funny went on there. There we go. We will bring it, this is called a control loop or a control edge. Uh, on the edges of geometry, you want to have something just behind it to support the uh, subdivision surface or any bevels that you'll put on there. So it's not a uh, extreme distance for any kind of smoothing or averaging to occur. Now let's turn these into quads. J, 
we could actually have a, in fact, I'm going to. Let's divide this way, divide this way, and I'm going to take away these vertexes. Delete, V, and there we go. Now we still have our solidify modifier on there. Let's add another modifier, and this is going to be our mirror modifier, and it mirrors on the central point, the origin point rather. Let's select both X and Y to mirror. Now when we edit, we only have to work with one edge and not redo our steps on all of, all of the edges. Uh, so I'm going to divide this a few times so that the central points are roughly squares. That looks all right. And we want to put our mirror modifier above our solidify modif modifier so that it is done first. Otherwise, we're going to have internal edges that um, that get extruded up in, you know, on the inside. So mirror first, and we're going to we're going to keep our modifiers there for now. And let's add a bevel bevel modifier, and we're going to allow it to determine which edges get beveled by the edge, uh, by the by the angle of the edge. Let's change this to two, two segments in the bevel, and we'll bring this down to 0 0.001. And we don't want it to be super sharp, but I think it should be a little sharper than that. Let's go about half that distance. That looks pretty good. And let's add our subdivision surface modifier. And we'll go two and smooth. So this is a good example of, of working with modifiers to develop your model. You really only have this geometry that you have to work with, however, all of these changes are made one after the other, and they can be moved around if need be, taken out one at a time, whatever you want to do, and not have to actually change your mesh uh, in any way. So for instance, right now, I think this might be a little thick yet. So let's take this down to 0.006. That looks better, looks better for a glass shelf. If we go into perspective mode, we can see a little better what that looks like. Right like that. Now, this shelf is going to be held to the wall by two uh, fixture pieces that look an awful lot like these. So what we're going to do is we're going to do what we did when creating these, which was select the bottom ring, control plus, until we have all the pieces we want selected. Um, control plus, that looks good. Shift D, and now you have this geometry kind of sitting on top of each other. Hit P to separate it from the object. And if we go to object mode, there it is. Let's bring that down, G, Z. And you'll see that this has a mirror modifier on it, and it is using the faucet above as the as the point of reference for the mirroring. We want to change that to the shelf. And if we go to side view, we will rotate them by negative 90 degrees and bring them back on the Y. Actually, let's just bring this up here. We could use snapping, but this only has to be, well, that, that's actually pretty close. There we go. Bring that down a little bit underneath and tab in edit mode. Grab this front, 
G and we'll bring it out to uh, about midway. Now we can use the skew tool which is shift control alt s <laughs> and then select your um, your axis that you want to move it on or that you want to skew it on. It's actually called shear not skew sorry and we'll go by a factor of one which is an exact 45 degree angle. <laughs> then we can extrude on the Z, scale on Z to zero, because remember if we scale to zero it goes flat, and we'll bevel this the slightest bit like so. E to go uh, to justify toward an edge. F to flip it around to the other edge. I'm going to go into wireframe mode so I can just select straight through here. And we're going to bring this up just through the glass. So it'll be a little knob on top. And we'll subdivide this a little bit for the sake of our smoothing. I hope you're you're able to keep up at this point. I I know this is all repetitive, so I'm trying not to spend too much time reminding you how to do each step. Going to the top, the part that shines shows through. We will extrude well, let's fill that's that's a legitimate use of the fill tool unlike earlier with that edge that wouldn't attach to anything inset and let's move these up it's going to be kind of a stainless steel look actually it'll probably be a uh, a chrome chrome look and actually fill might not have been what we wanted to do let's delete that face D or X and F Select that Control F for the Faces menu. G is Grid Fill. There we go. So now we have that holding them up, holding up our our shelf. Now we want a little railing across the front so that things like soap and shaving cream and toothbrushes and such don't just fall off the front. Especially since this is over the toilet, it might not be the best practical design in the world. So let's go to seven on top and let's hide the faucet layer because we we do not need we do not need geometry from that anymore however you'll see that hides part of our mesh select this M for move or click and drag in the outliner move it to shelf then when we disable faucet we have this still available to us now let's go to top view Shift F7. I'm sorry, that's Shift 7 on the numpad. Shift A to add. We're going to add a mesh circle. This will be 0 0.01. Change this to 12. Scale it in a little bit. We could actually have copied the uh, geometry from that, but I didn't think of that. Tab in edit mode, extrude on the Z, and we'll bring this down. These kind of come through the glass. <clears throat> a supporting edge down here, edge loop, control F, G, and uh, do the same here, and we're approximating here, we would, uh, we could use the bevel modifier for these edges rather than adding in our own uh, supporting geometry. We'll 
at a subdivision surface. <coughs> and this will be kind of a low a low railing or a I guess you, that's what you'd call it, the shelf guard, whatever. Let's turn on a s mirror modifier and we want it to mirror on the X and we'll use the shelf as our point of reference again and going to 3 let's go into wireframe mode so you can see the next thing I'm doing here shift A we're going to add a circle this one is going to have 6 vertices and we want it to not align itself to the, the world, we want it to align itself to our view. Scale down alright, now we will bring it outside of that, go back to solid view, move that up and control A apply rotation and scale again. Let's select the post for the railing, hide the subdivision, and we're going to turn on snapping, and we want snapping to be to an edge in this case. Select our small circle that's going to be our crossbar, tab into edit mode and let's turn on our wireframe for everything by clicking on overlays and going down here to geometry wireframe select these G X and you'll see the circle it's snapping to that edge and we want these to snap to a face because they don't line up with an edge. So we'll G, X, there we go. And actually let's shrink this a little bit. Control A, rotation and scale. Go back into edit mode, change our snapping to edge. G, X, right there. And these we're going to turn off snapping and just bring them in on the X until they're right on the edge like like that. It may not be super exact but it's good enough. Uh, let's take it and select this other piece and hit control J to put them together. Now they're all one mesh. We're going to add some geometry There we go. Select these faces. We want to join this in, so we're going to get rid of these. And two will uh, go into edge select mode. We'll alt click and control E edge loops. Sorry, bridge the loops. And take this and extrude on the X. Scale X zero, and we'll bring them all the way to the center. And oops, they go over each other, uh, and that's kind of a pain. So what we can do with the mirror modifier is turn on clipping, so that nothing can go past the center point. There we go. See, I, I keep moving, but it it won't go any further. And we want merge to be on because anything at the center then will merge into a single ring rather than having two on top of each other which is that problem we were running into earlier we want to work on this and let's place our cursor right here cursor to, to selected we're going to change our rotation to the 3D cursor and Go to edge select, select this, 
Shift D, rotate Z 180. So that was 180 degrees around the 3D cursor. We'll select these faces, delete them. That was the wrong thing. Delete faces, not vertices. And now we have our overlapping geometry. Select all vertices, merge by distance. Take these, extrude them out on the X a little bit, scale 0 on the X, and that scaled them to the 3D cursor. Uh, it's not a problem per se, but if you didn't know what happened, it kind of disappeared and it, it, just, it just went inside there. So let's G, X, and we're not using the 3D cursor right now anyway for our rotation. So we'll go to median point. E scale, this should be routine by now. Control G, Control F, G, and we'll slide our edge over there. So now if we turn our subdivision back on and turn off our wireframe overlay, because that really gets in the way. You can see our finished result. Now it's always a good idea to have your mirror occur first. I don't see a problem occurring here but oftentimes subdivision will not work correctly if it is the first uh, modifier and just in using it you'll kind of learn why. So there we have our shelf. Um, we can move these out to the edges a little more and I don't know, that looks like a good spot. Put them wherever you want uh, and that is our shelf. Wonderful. Once we add our materials this, this will be a very simple thing to uh, texture and material. Material? That's not a verb. But anyway, we'll put materials on it and it'll look like glass and chrome. Before we move on to our soap bottle, we're going to rename all of these objects so that we know what they are. I put uh, underscores in these names. It's, that's not a necessity. It's just a naming scheme that I've started with. I saw some people do in tutorials early on and I kind of adopted the practice myself. Alright, so we're going to start a new collection and call this soap. It's going to be a round glass bottle. So we're going to start with a UV sphere. And since my favorite number with round objects seems to be 12, we'll do that. And uh, we'll do six vertical divisions. If you see um, this number selects determines how many uh, vertical divisions there are. Usually uh, to get even geometry you would use uh, half of the number of vertices around the object. Let's actually change this to 16 and 8 and we're going to shrink this down quite a bit. And we'll move it up. 
we're going to keep the shelf there as a reference for size. Uh, we'll probably make it a different size eventually, but we'll start like this. I'm going to add a division here, an edge loop rather, just so we have something to work with that is kind of in between this row and this row. I'm going to select that edge loop, extrude it down on the Z, and E scale control F G. It's kind of our standard operating procedure now. We'll scale that out a bit. Control B For the top, we didn't want to do that. We're going to do this. Uh, let's pull out the knife tool. So K is knife, and you'll see it kind of grabs onto edges and vertices. If you hit C, it will, I'm sorry, hold control, it will snap to the center of any edge you're on. So if we hold control, click on the far one, and C constrains to a 45 degree ang angle, so vertical 45 or horizontal. And we click. We, if we click, it gives us the option to make another cut, but in this case we're just going to hit enter to finalize, and I'll rotate up to show you something this did not cut all the way through. So if we control Z, go back to 1, and activate knife again with K, control, click, C for straight across, and we're going to hit Z. And that switches to cut through, like that. So let's delete that center vertex, copy this with shift D, so duplicate rather, and we'll extrude on the Z. This is going to be our soap pump on the top. And we'll extrude one more time. Now this part will be a little bit trickier. It's not not really repetitive from what we were doing before. Uh, we'll extrude and scale just like this in fact we're going to go with a different design than I actually had in mind so let's just make a cylinder E scale control F G And we're going to scale, we're going to control R, select this and scale out, scale out. Let's just select this line, this edge in the middle, shift S, add or, or put our cursor here and we're going to add a circle facing the view and 
six points is enough. We'll just scale it down to about there. Move it inside on the Y and extrude on the Y. And as we bring it over here, okay, we're going to extrude again. Bring it down here a bit, rotate, bevel this. I'm trying not to review every little action uh, since this should be review at this point. our bevel modifier above the subdivision. Give it two edges. That looks all right. Now it's beveling more than we want. So let's mark out the edges that we want beveled or or we can play with this angle until we have only the things beveled that we want. That works out right there. So let's take this seam and we want to rip it. So V is rip. It separated that into two. We'll take the top, control L, we'll select everything linked and we're going to separate that into another object so that we can put a different modifier on this which is going to be solidify and we don't want that uh, affecting affecting the pump section. So let's add solidify. We're going to put it at the top. Take off bevel because that's not needed here. Make sure our scale is applied. And take our thickness down to about there. Even thickness on and come into edit mode and give ourselves a tighter crease. There we go. Let's set the origin of this uh, object. I don't think we've done that before. So if we put our cursor here, right click, set origin to 3D cursor. Now the origin of this object is right here at the base. So that if we were to scale it, it would be scaling from that, that point. What I just did was I gave it a rim on the bottom so that we'd have a bevel here, not just a f uh, sharp end to the object. All right, so that's all we need to do to make our soap bottle. Let's control A, rotation and scale here, 
and make sure that has not affected our bevel modifier. That still looks good. Uh, this will not be close to the camera in the final render, so I'm not going to worry about separating this piece from the, the screw-on cap or any of that. Uh, this will just be what we have. So let's put the the uh, center of this base as the origin for this bottle as well. There we go. And this is going to be glass, that's why we gave it the solidify modifier, because you're going to be able to see that it, it has thickness. When we move this around, we want the cap to follow it. So what we can do is parent from here to here. Uh, control P is your parent menu, and we're just going to object to parent, or parent to object, the other way around. And control S to save, and that is it for this video. I'll see you in the next one. Hey guys, if you found this video useful, hit like and consider subscribing to the channel. And you can turn on that notification bell too so that you don't miss future videos. Until next time, I'm Carl with Blender Forge.